Before we begin, thank you very much to Dr. Lockdown for joining the Patreon campaign over at patreon.com forward slash TJ Omega. We lost a few before the end of the month, so we didn't quite hit the Beast Wars gold, but no trolling involved. It was all people that were supporting and still are, maybe just not as much as they were. No, uh, this is the first thing I say. Take care of yourself first before you take care of me. That's that. That's the priority. You know, don't, don't you know? Don't worry about me if you have to take it down a notch. But I'm confident we'll get there. I'm confident we'll get there because we're still really close. So I wanted to talk about what might be the weirdest toy line for Transformers I've ever seen in my life. So if you don't know what Super Seven is, Super Seven does a lot of collectors' figures. Um, I believe they're the ones behind the. Uh, the, the reaction figures, like the little ones of that big. Uh, but they also do full-size, uh, seven-inch scale figures that are extremely nice. I collect their Ninja Turtle line, and it's, like, amazing because they're the original Ninja Turtle designs for the action figures rather than the cartoon accurate, loaded with extra detail, articulation, tons and tons of accessories. They do a fantastic job, you know? You know, it's like... It's like if NECA toys didn't break so easily. That's how that's that's essentially what Super Seven is. However, when they started doing Transformers, I was I was kind of scratching my head. It was like we just got Transformers Red announced. Hasbro's already doing non-transforming articulated Transformers. So what could Super Seven do that's going to make them worth you know thirty five dollars more than what Hasbro's asking for a Transformers Red figure? Well, we're finding out. <laughs> so, what you're seeing on screen now is Wave 1. Yes, I'm covering up Optimus Prime, but it's Optimus Prime. I'm pretty sure if you're watching this channel, you know what Optimus Prime looks like. What you're seeing besides him is a ghost star screen with translucent glittered plastic, which their, their stuff is a softer temper than the hard ABS. It should be fine long term. But it's the two in the middle that are like, whoa. Because Bombshell, okay, you could probably find enough people nostalgic for Bombshell and, okay, I will do, I will take the Bombshell at $55. But the big thing to shop to Bombshell, it's the Action Master design. Like to the point where he even comes with his original Action Master. Like, and Bonsai Tron, of course, is an Action Master exclusive uh, character. So, yeah, like, it's, it's so bizarre. Like, I know, because, like, anytime they do, anytime they do Transformer action figures that don't transform, the comparison is Action Masters, but I've never seen anyone lean into it like that and specifically go for the Action Master designs. And the weird thing to me is that the Starscream and Optimus Prime are entirely G1 cartoon-based. You know, there's nothing about them that is reminiscent of the old Action Masters, even in, in their accessory loadout. So, wh why? <laughs> like, why? Like, it, I, I'll say this. It feels like whoever is designing it, Super 7, whoever is the one making the decisions on the characters, it feels like they're putting some of their own childhood favorites into this line. Like, for whatever reason, Hasbro is, not, is just, like, totally hands-off. Make whatever you want. And they went... Cool, I'm upgrading all my old Action Masters. So, Bombshell, Bonsai Tron, super weird inclusions. But the line gets weirder. Because this is just Wave 1. When we get to Wave 2, we get some more typical designs. But man, like, again, there's some weird choices here. G1 Megatron, of course, no shock Megatrons in Wave 2. Tracks. I don't know how Trax became flavor of the day all of a sudden. Like, Fun like Funko announced like the next Transformer they're doing is Trax as a Funko Pop, which you think like they've only done eight G ones so far, not including like repaints, you know, etc. But to go with Trax next, weird. We are, and of course we've got a Trax toy in Kingdom on the shelves now. It's not the best. Uh, and now we have another track. Like, you have this litany of Transformer characters from G1. We're all the way across the board. You can do, you know, of course, way even more beyond G1. There's literally thousands of characters in the Mythos, and you pick tracks for Wave 2. It's a weird choice. It's an interesting choice. I'll, I'll give it that. Then comes, then comes uh, Bludgeon. 
Uh, that's not too shocking. Bludgeon, I feel like the attempts to give Bludgeon a vehicle mode when his, what we know him as, like that orange samurai armor with a skull head, there's no, re like, there's no way you can, like, seamlessly blend his old green tank mode in with this just all orange and yellow robot mode. It doesn't work. Anytime I've seen a bludgeon toy at mass retail, I don't like the I don't like the green mixed in for the sake of getting his tank to be green. It just green, yellow, like green and orange and that uh, purple color just look really weird together. And I don't and I don't like uh, I don't like when things like uh, Revenge of the Fallen Bludgeon, where it's just like huge amounts of tank hanging off of him. No. Um, I think this is about the only way you can get a bludgeon that actually looks the way bludgeon is supposed to look. Uh, now, of course, no uh, no inner figure, but he does come with a turret from the inner figure as an accessory weapon. And then the weirdest one here is Grimlock, because Grimlock himself is a very easy one to include. Dinobot's always popular, of course. However, it's... The, it's it's the Season 3 Grimlock. It's the Grimlock that refused to come out of his T-Rex mode for some reason, Grimlock. And again, well, I don't have photo. I don't have photos, but you can see, like, see, see like, like, you look at, tr like, Trax comes with, like, the evil alien head from the movie, six interchangeable, uh, a tank, which I don't know what it is, Blaster, okay, so, yeah, a little bit of that. Where is the Grimlock? Grimlock Dino Mode, six interchangeable hands, mind transfer helmet. So he, he's got he's got that going for him. Soft goods waiter aprons, actual cloth apron for him. Serving tray, drinkware, a fish, which is also from uh, Grimlock's new brain, same as the mind control helmet. Uh, King crown and wheelie. So he actually comes with a bonus figure, and I'm, I'm willing to bet. It actually has articulation, unlike the wheelie that we got with Grimlock recently at retail. Uh, yeah, so, so like super odd. Like Grimlock, yes, but the Dino Grimlock from season three? That, that's such a weird call. It's such a weird call. It makes it unique, but it's a weird call. I kind of want it, <laughs> not going to lie. And then came wave three. Wave three was just announced. And that's kind of what made me want to go, let's talk about these for, for a while. Let's see if we can figure out exactly why we're going with what we're going with. Wave 2, it's all G1. You know, three cartoon based and one comic book based. So, but it's all G1. They all look like they go together. So I thought, well, maybe the line is straightening itself out. Maybe the line is actually trying to actually uh, come together a little bit. Nope. No, 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 no. Wave three. I will tell you, I'll remind you, wave one, as of this recording, hasn't even been released yet. And we're talking about wave three, which is almost a year from being released. And oh my. Mm. So weird. So, yeah, dead center, we have G2 Megatron, a proper G2 Megatron at that. Uh, G1 Rekgar, straight up ca cartoon accurate Rekgar. On the left, we've got Tarn from IDW. Okay. And then at the bottom, the Alligatacon, the rebuilt Optimus Prime. This is such a weird one. Like, I, I can't get over that. Like, I, I, I think like every time, like when they did, when they did a, when they did Titans Return Skull Cruncher, I think everyone thought, uh, oh, you can do the Alligatacon now. Just repaint him into Optimus and give like, switch him to like an Optimus Titan Master. Wow, like, ah, that'd be real easy. No, never did that. Never did that. But hey, the Alligatacon now has an official toy. It's, you know, it's, it's it's licensed third party. You know, and for 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 what is like a, a toy alligator, they do seem to have gone all out. Yeah, so. <laughs> The weapon turret is there. Uh, Optimus Prime's dismantled head is there. This was such a stupid episode, by the way. I believe this was City of Steel. Um, it was such a stupid episode, because Megatron won. Like, he disabled Prime, captured him, dismantled him. 
But apparently Optimus Prime can live and still control his limbs if he's just a head. Apparently that's a thing. You know, like how Bumblebee in like the fifth live action movie fell apart in combat, but everything just like pulled itself back together. It's that. It's that. Uh, but Megatron like Megatron's like get rid of the you know like okay he took the parts that he wanted for some reason he wanted Prime's arm and gun to be like a sentry turret, and then just like no no you can just like ditch the rest of it. And they, like, for whatever reason, the Constructicons rebuilt it into an alligator. I don't know. Nobody knows. It's the weirdest thing ever. You know, at that point, it's just like, just just keep his, keep the scraps of his body just in a, in a bin. <laughs> and you, and guess what? You win. You've won. I don't know, just, or double tap the head, you know, shoot the head into space, do something. You won. No, no. The the benefit the, the the downside of being an after school cartoon villain, you have to be written stupid in order for everything to still work the way the writers wanted to work. So Rekgar as well. Rekgar's got a billion accessories. He's got an alternate head to make him cart to make a toy accurate Rekgar with an animation accurate body. That'll be weird. One thing I love that they do is like you see the uh, you see like the spin axe that uh, Rekgar has, you see it in red and gray, and the gray matches the original G1 toy, whereas the red is the animation accurate, which is, like, they do that a lot with their figures, they do that with their Ninja Turtle figures, and it's a beautiful thing to include to have those options available. The G2 Megatron is probably my favorite of the batch, because it so hits the Marvel G2 Megatron the way I wanted it to. I wish there were more head options with the bright blue from the comic book, because that's my memory of G2 Megatron. Uh, it does come with a, it does come with a more uh, G1 Megatron style head. It comes with the toy accurate head as well. It comes with the toy accurate cannon for the shoulder as well as the one the normal fusion cannon that uh, they used in the G1 uh, or G2 comics, as well as more guns because that's the G2 comics. I really like the figure. Like of all the Super Seven figures, I think this is the one where like I actually do want it. Just because it hits. I got the Selects G2 Megatron. I'm just like so disappointed because it just does not like it doesn't feel right with the arm cannon on the arm and like no forward chest. Like it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like G2 Megatron to me. Even if this doesn't transform. Like, there's still so much about this that hits my nostalgia in just the right way. And I guess that's the reason they're doing such weird ones here. Because aside from the fact it doesn't really clash with uh, Transformers Red at this point, outside of, like, Optimus and Megatron having figures, but they're hitting nostalgia points that even the current toy lines aren't. You know, like, oh, I mean, granted... I don't know why you do Rekgar when we have a really animation-accurate Rekgar on the toy shelves right now. But we do. We have. That's what we've gotten. Uh, and then we go to Tarn. So weird. We throw an IDW character in here. And Tarn looks great. Uh, it looks like they really muted the purple on him, which that I'm not a fan of. But he does look really imposing and intimidating. He's got his, like, his original... Uh, vestige as a head, the re you know the removed Decepticon mask. We don't have an IDW Megatron. We can like hang that on the chest yet. Uh, the dual fusion cannon is there. Uh, I think uh, of course like the big thing here is Tarn doesn't have a whole lot of accessories. Instead, he's got Nickel. Nickel's got a figure now, an official figure, which I love. I absolutely love because I I love Nickel as a character. It's like a no nonsense medic for the Decepticons who's like, just, even against the DJD, has, like, like no, no, I, I, I the, the expression I want to use, I cannot use because it's PG on YouTube, <laughs> but she's like that. If you know what I'm talking about, she's like that, and she's wonderful at that, but yeah, this is such a weird wave, G2, G1, uh, IDW, like, and then, like, the Alligatacon of all things. Why an Alligatacon? That's generally what I'm wondering. 
I get to start piecing this together. It's like, okay, these are probably childhood favorites of one of the designers who really wanted to see good action figures made of a maid, you know, represent a few characters that have not gotten anything proper in a long time. No, Alligatacon. Alligatacon is in here. Memorable, yes, but $55 toy memorable comes with ridiculous accessories. Like, I think that's it. I think it's just like they're going for the weirdest things they can find and do. And that's just what they're, what, you know, what they decided, like, we're going to do. In the Ninja Turtle line, at least there's some cohesion. You know, you get a turtle every wave, you get one of their allies, you get one villain, and then you get one out there character of like, hey, do you remember this weird one had a toy too? At least, you know, there's a structure to those releases for their Ninja Turtle line. And even with, like, their uh, Thundercats, it kind of follows that same vein where you get a little bit of the new character a little bit of the classic characters, and then a little bit of weird. And we started doing that, Optimus Wave 1, Megatron Wave 2, you think Starscream Wave 3, Bumblebee Wave 3, uh, Ironhide, Soundwave, Wave 3. No! Rekgar Alligatacon. <laughs> I don't know. It's one of the weirdest Transformer lines I've ever seen in my life, and it makes it fascinating. I think it's a fascinating line. We don't even know what these are going to be like yet, and we already know three waves of them. We basically know a year's worth of releases without even having one in hand. So it's an interesting thing to talk about, and it's an interesting thing to wait and watch. I don't even want to collect this line. I just want to see what weirdness is going to exist because of it. So let me know in the comments below who you're hoping to see in Super 7. Maybe it's your favorite G1 character, Maybe it's like the weird, like, you know, maybe it's the cat from uh, the Child's Play episode. I don't know. It could be anything at this point. I think that's the fun of this line. Literally anything could be released. So sit back and wait. When the next ones come out, we'll get to talk about them too. Until then, I will see you next time. Guys, I am facing the most powerful enemy any YouTuber can face, the algorithm, and I need your help to defeat him. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Every time you do, we attack that algorithm and we drive it back until it can no longer defeat this channel. Thank you very much.